guys, so this is episode two of the Impala project. We've got the car pushed outside right now. Uh, I've got the motor pulled out in the last video toward the end as you guys saw. And right now we're about to uh, show you guys the floor in this car and why I'm going to put a full one piece floor in it. Um, the floor is actually a lot worse than I thought, but again, the floor in this car is the worst part. If you know Impalas or X-Frames, um, these cars are usually rotted pretty much all over the place, especially the trunk area. Um, and I got super lucky with this car. So again, I'm just gonna treat it to a one piece floor and just be done with it. So like I said, got the car pushed out. You guys can see again, how nice the patina is on this car. And if you didn't watch the last video, this car is super solid. There is only just a few spots on this passenger side quarter panel right here and here. And then both spots on the lower fenders, just where dirt and grime usually sits in the lower fenders. And obviously moisture catches. But I'll show you guys. Got the interior pulled out. We've got one spot here on the passenger floor. Of course, you got the mangled transmission tunnel. See a really good sized spot on the passenger floor. The worst part, in my opinion, is back here under the seat see back there there's a good size crack and rust spot there and we'll walk around to the driver's side I also got the trunk cleaned out and it is extremely solid look at this just need to reseam seal where the factory seam still was you know in your corners runs down again in your corners over there. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and knock it all out. Over here, quarters, side trunk pan. Got one spot starting right here, which I'm not gonna worry about. Small spot there, and the worst spot is right here. But again, we got that trunk piece to go in here. Absolutely no rot in the front of the trunk. And again, we got this lower panel my buddy Mike's gonna put in. So we get our trunk latch back. Come around to the driver's side. You'll see the driver's floor is pretty ate up right there. A little bit of spots right here. And again, the worst spot being right there and then the back. So also got the drivetrain out, like I said, but I pressure washed it off camera. Cleaned up really nice. Again, just gonna leave it just like this. So with all that being said, one thing in the last video I did notice, I need to talk less and work more on camera. But the last video was really just to show you guys the car, talk about my plans with it, and uh, yeah. About to get this thing loaded up and taken to my buddy Mike's. Uh, right now it's Monday, it's actually Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you guys. Um, but we're gonna take this to my buddy Mike on Wednesday and hopefully he can get this one piece floor put in without taking the car off the frame. I'm gonna try and get the windshield put out or taken out rather, um, but I think he might be able to put the floor through the bottom of the car. I know that sounds crazy, but I've seen it done. Um, so we're gonna try that or try something. So we don't have to take the car off the frame, but we'll figure that out once we get there or he'll figure it out once it gets there. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing loaded up and I guess I'll see you guys once we get it to my buddy Mike's. All right, y'all, you can see we got the Impala on the trailer. It is the next day and I am getting ready to take this car to my buddy Mike. You can see we got the floor on the trailer, uh, but also just wanna show you guys before I loaded up on the trailer, I had my glass guy come out and pull the windshield on this thing. And actually I've got a bolt sitting on top of the car there. Um, pulled the windshield on this thing uh, that way in case my buddy Mike needs to have some extra room to get this floor in. Like I said, I'm not even sure if he's going to be able to fit this thing in the car without taking it off the frame because that is the right way we're supposed to do it. I am assuming that he is probably just going to cut the back half where the rear seat would typically sit. Uh, maybe cut it around in this area and then just weld it back together and seam seal it. That's probably what I'm figuring is going to happen because uh, I really don't want to pull this thing off the frame. 
I know that's not the right way to do it, but this is a budget build. Also wanted to mention that I did finally decode the VIN on this car. You can see, I'll put up a picture on the screen. Uh, the rivets are original, and this car is a real SS bucket seat four-speed car. So that is super cool and obviously increases the value on this thing quite a bit. Um, obviously, we're going to be sticking a 350 700R4 into it. Um, but now that I do know that, obviously that is most likely the original 4-speed out of the car and probably the original 327. So yeah, hopefully he can get this floor put in with no problem. As soon as we get it back, progress will be uh, made pretty quick and we'll be cruising this thing in no time. Alright guys, just leaving Restoration World. Grab some odds and ends stuff for the Impala. If you guys don't know what Restoration World is, it is basically like Chevy Parts Paradise and we are super lucky to live close to it. I live about an hour from it. Uh, it's just right here in Dayton. Uh, Huber Heights area is actually where it's at. Um, so literally I just hop on 70 and take it all the way out here to Huber Heights. Um, but just picked up some you know, miscellaneous parts. Like I said, I've got a trunk seal. I got a complete antenna um, assembly. I needed a complete key set as well, you know, for the, the ignition, trunks, doors, etc. Um, so got that and also picked up some parts for a buddy of mine. He needed some Chevelle parts and stuff like that. And we are headed back to Columbus. Um, I did drop the Impala off for sheet metal. So that'll be done. He's already got the trunk cut out and the um, latch assembly area as well. So that's all looking good and he's just getting that knocked out and then he'll start putting the floor in so i will show you guys that once i get it back and we will start putting the front end and bags on stuff like that so stay tuned um, this is probably going to be a longer video or longer episode so y'all sit tight okay guys you can see the impala is back in the shop and back from getting the floors and trunk replaced um, I do apologize. I was sick the past couple days, so I didn't feel like picking up the camera and I wanted to start filming again before I got too far ahead, but I did start tinkering with the car. Obviously in the last episode and earlier in this video, you've seen the engine is out, windshield is out, and you guys can see we now have a full one piece floor put into this car. Well, technically one piece, but you can see Mike did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He cut right where the floor pan and rear seat meet and that way he could slide the rear section in and bring this larger section in farther back and slide it underneath the dash and column etc without taking this car off the frame so um, obviously you can see everything looks great it's all seam sealed just need to put the floor plugs in so that is awesome. And the trunk is full again, but you can see Mike also put the trunk belly in and also put the rear uh, trunk lip section in as well. So apologize for the mess, but he did do that. Where I didn't film or leave off is I started taking the suspension apart. Turn the light back on. Maybe not so bright. Uh, so I started to take your upper and lower control arms off, tie rods, etc., and started to disassemble the factory upper and lower control arms. But unfortunately, what I ran into with the factory upper and lower control arms is um, I got the lower ball joints out, but the actual control arm bushings itself on top of your control arm, you know, obviously what I'm pointing at, uh, those were seized. Uh, the whole rod section was seized onto the upper control arm. Uh, I debated on getting tubular control arms at that point, but I was like, you know what? Uh, better safe than sorry. Let's just get stock uppers and lowers. It's cheaper. This car is not going to be fancy. Obviously, we explained that many times. So I bought uh, powder-coated or painted, whatever these are, uh, stock upper and lowers. And let me grab my light again, show you guys what I started doing today just do check fitment and everything. We got our airbag uh, brackets and airbags from Street Machinery. So big shout out to Boris and the team up there. Uh, they got these bags and brackets to my door. Stupid fast and stupid ch uh, stupid cheap. Uh, Boris is 
you know, two and a half hours from me. So showed up next day, ordered on a Friday, came on a Saturday. Uh, so those came in and they fit flawlessly. Uh, the only thing I found with these control arms that I purchased, uh, not so much the uppers, but exactly the lowers, is if you see these two uh, bolts right here, if you see that hole in the middle, that's where the bump stop mounting location was for the uh, lower control arms. But if you come and look at a stock lower control arm, you can see got the ball joint out of this one. Um, the bolt holes for the bump stop on a stock lower control arm are spaced right there. And if we go back to our bag brackets, um, Boris's bag brackets for the front um, bags bolt on the factory bump stop location. So I did my best to uh, eyeball the factory bump stop mounting bolts and drilled those out. And you can see we got our airbag in now and everything fits great. Um, looks like nothing's gonna rub. I extended the control arm all the way up, make sure the bag itself is not gonna rub into our shock tower, so everything looks good there. So really now all we gotta do is grab our stock spindle CPP kit, uh, disc brake kit, and start putting that on. And yeah, pretty much just keep moving forward. All right guys, so I'm not exactly sure where I left off, but I believe I was just about to install our CPP disc brake kit. And I actually returned that kit just because I wasn't super happy with it. And the modifications I was going to have to make to that kit just wasn't worth um, doing so. And I could have just went with this kit to begin with. Should have done more research, but long story short, it's all good now. Got this super nice kit from Mike Garcia Restoration Parts. Got it on eBay. It's about $410, I think, but shipping is what got me the most. It was like $111, but this kit is well worth it. He's got super nice machine spacers and it all works with zero offset because a lot of these kits like the CPP one, which is why I didn't like it the most, is because it offset the wheel out like another three eighths of an inch, which obviously isn't a whole bunch. But, you know, when you're talking about low riders or cars on air ride, you just want a kit that just bolts on, doesn't grind the inside of your wheel, etc. And unfortunately, that CPP disc brake kit was more so like a 15 inch wheel or a 20 inch wheel kind of kit. So long story short, got this kit from all the way from California. And if you come over here, I already went and put the driver side on. Uh, the instructions I will say were kind of vague, but maybe that's just me being an idiot. Um, you can see we got it on though. Super nice kit, caliper. I actually, this sounds stupid, but I like the looks of this caliper more than the CPP kit we had because the caliper they had was just, I don't know, about that big and it's just like a square block. This one actually looks like it can stop a freaking car. Um, but you can see we got our 13 inch Supreme wheel and go ahead and put this on. Not that it's a heavy wheel by any means. And you'll see, obviously this isn't bolted down all the way but I'm pushing as hard as I can on the inside of the wheel and there's no grinding, rubbing, or anything whatsoever because again, this is most likely the kit everybody uses and I should have done more research and got this to begin with. Be careful with that. But you can see again, our disc brake caliper. We got our rotor. All the bearings have been packed and greased. There's a nice big bracket on the back side, which I'll show you. So this bracket will actually bolt to your spindle I think like this actually I guess it goes like this I don't know obviously we'll put the other side on and I'll show you guys how it looks on the car um, everything's torqued greased down loctited on the other side so all we need to do is put our greased bearings into this rotor and hub and start assembling the other side so we'll go ahead and take our rotor and again I already greased these bearings, but I'm going to throw a little bit of grease on the inside. I know a lot of people don't do this, but I feel like it's necessary. Not a whole lot, because you don't want it obviously slinging out onto the back side of the rotor. Go ahead and grab a rag real quick. So we'll go ahead and take our bearing. You just set it in there like that. And you'll take your seal. 
grab the hammer. It's very important that you just tap it in. You don't want to bend. that seal you can see it's in all the way so that is done and we will go ahead and take these brackets cut these off it's very important you do not lose this one because that goes on the top up here and we'll go ahead and loosen this bolt again another spacer right there super nice kit he's got all these nice machine spacers you can tell a lot of research went into this, especially this spacer here, which slides onto the actual knuckle or spindle rather. So let me go ahead and get this set up on the car and I will start from there and show you guys how easy this kit is to put together. Okay guys, as you can see, we got our spindle on the car now. We got our airbag back in with the airline running up through the top. We've got our spindle spacer here, I'll call it. Not exactly sure why, but they request that you put Loctite on the inside of this. So we'll go ahead and do that. Not going to make it perfect because again, it doesn't really need to be. So you'll take this spindle spacer with the edge side obviously out and you'll see this piece fits on there super duper tight. And you want to take this large bolt right here and this spacer right here. And you'll see the holes. I guess the R should be out toward you and the caliper holes should obviously be toward the back of the car. So you want to put this bolt in like this spacer on the back side, and grab a little bit of Loctite. That's a lot, a lot of Loctite, but <laughs> we'll go ahead and put that in like so. This bolt's really sharp. You can actually see it's tearing up my glove there, but you'll see this bracket sits perfectly in that spindle. Man, this bolt is just tearing up my fingers. Anyway, got that on. You'll see your bracket here. You want the two holes to come to the back like so, because you need it to match up with this hole. And you want to take your spacer, see if I can find it, our large bolt. Again, put your bolt through this one, spacer like so. And we're not going to put Loctite on this just yet. We're going to use this bolt to hold it. I apologize, I keep bumping the camera on the fender of the car. So we'll use that like so. This knuckle around. I can figure it out. There we go. Jeez, I guess I'm a rookie. We got that like that. Put your bolt in like so. I think I've got two shorter bolts on the other side by accident, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and tighten everything down. Put a little bit more Loctite than that one. Let's see, that one is three quarter. And a wrench. Well, I've seemed to misplace my 5 eighths wrench, so just use my ratcheting one for now. That one's getting tight. Come around to this side. No idea where that wrench went. Alright. 
Good and tight, good and tight. Now we're ready for our hub. Again, I apologize for the delay on these videos. I know you're not really supposed to grease these, but the more grease, the better. Although you don't want a bunch slinging everywhere. So we got our shim on. We're about to put our hub assembly on. See, it just goes on there just like that. And if I smack the camera one more time on the fender, I might explode. This goes inside just like this. Again, I'm gonna keep wiping the grease off my hands so I don't get it on the rotor. I believe that goes on there like that. I'm not a mechanic. I crank them pretty, pretty good and tight. Again, just to seat the bearings. And then the rule of thumb is to back them off a quarter turn, but I just crank them till I feel is right. Either way, your cotter pin, which we're not gonna bend up or anything yet because this is not finalized, just goes in there like that. The reason it's not finalized because I need to run the airline through the frame, like I said, but a super easy, straightforward install. Take our caliper. Don't lose the bolts, because I already lost my 5 8 wrench. Take our caliper, make sure the pads don't fall out. You see? Goes on there just like that. Get our bolts lined up. Yeah, there we go. Super easy install, guys. Now we're ready for a wheel. We can put this thing back on the ground, air this thing up and down choice let's go ahead and do exactly that and i will cut to when we're ready for that okay guys you can see i've got the bags temporarily linked together and i've already got about 45 pounds of air in the bags don't mind our trusty rust spot there but this is going to be the first time it's going to go on the ground with air ride so here we go. So now what we can do, pull our jack stands out of the way, grab a flathead. Check for Yeah, she's gonna be low, boys. Still got more to go, too, and the subframes are most on the ground. <laughs> so the bag is pretty much all the way deflated. Here we go. Yeah. Look at that, boys. Holy sh <laughs> It's gonna be on the ground. That is killer now. We gotta get the back done still, but that is super easy. We will probably do this in this video. I am not sure yet. It's kind of trying to get the disc brakes done and get a video out for you guys because I know it has been a minute. And I think I'm gonna end it here. So that way we can focus on the back, get this thing rolled outside, and really show you guys the vision just all come together. So super cool. And I also got a bumper guard from my friend, Andrew Rumley matches the car perfectly it's got a little patina below the uh, nipples so perfect all right guys appreciate y'all watching be sure to give this video a big thumbs up press the subscribe button we've got a bunch of videos coming out on this thing we actually already got our full interior from gina ciadella so appreciate that that's going to be awesome we got to take our seats get the frames blasted and coated and it's all going to come together a lot of work left to do but seeing this on the ground is awesome. Obviously we need to reverse that a little bit, but I'm stoked. Appreciate y'all watching. See you in the next one.